Hey guys, this is Matt and JD. We're gonna we're at the Chicago Open. We're gonna look at round one of our games, and we're not gonna give you any spoilers. So make sure to watch the whole thing. And we'll start with JD's game. He's not gonna give spoilers, but like I don't know, it felt rough the first round. <laughs> you want me to take the the controls, take you through the game? Yeah. All right. So I play D four, of course, and then uh, Knight. Uh, it brings out the knight, and then we take the center, and then we get a Benoni, which is like. I don't know. I'm most afraid of these lines because I don't have any idea what I'm doing. So uh, D5. And then I was actually pretty happy because I like, went into Banco, which is like a version of the Benoni I feel a little bit better with. And I know we have this weird move in the chess, in the chess goals course, Knight D2. And like my opponent here spent, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes on this move trying to figure out what to do. And I think he actually came up with a pretty, he came up with the best, the best response, which was enough to, you know, throw me out. So he played, he took... And I played e4, which is what we what we do. We take the center, and then he immediately like starts crushing my center. When I talked to him after the game, he told me that like he's like he didn't think with the knight on d2 that I could possibly hold d5. And turns out he's kind of right a little bit. Um, I really didn't like these ideas where I take because I thought he would take back with the f pawn and then get to play d5, and I thought he would just have this massive center, and I didn't want to deal with that. Um, so I kind of just decided that like I'm just gonna play natural. I'll play this move a little quickly. And while it's maybe best, it's like, I don't know. I feel like I played this move a bit lazily. It's it's kind of the thematic move to defend d5 like that. But at the same time, um, you do have to wonder, can I hold that d5 pawn, right? Like, you don't want to lose it. And it turns out I decided I couldn't hold it. Like, I'm actually doing quite well out of the opening, apparently, here. But, like, this is where, like, I get all that time that he spent when I played knight d2, I gave it all back right here trying to figure out, like, how do I hold this d5 pawn? And I looked at moves like bringing the queen out and, you know, trying to defend this way. But I thought he would just play queen d6, queen b6, and I would have the same sort of problems. I actually thought about playing queen f3. And honestly, without looking at computer lines, if I were doing this again, I'd probably go the queen f3 route. Because it does just hold this d5 point. Uh, but there are a lot of lines where, like, if he wins this pawn, like, he can't just win the pawn right now. So I ended up playing knight f3, deciding to give away the pawn. And he, he really can't just win the pawn because, like, this this just wins a piece. Mm -hmm. Like, he can't defend. I mean, even if it didn't win a piece, I'm going to get the pawn back on f7. He's going to lose the right to castle. So I saw a lot of these kind of tactical ideas. And uh, I I think that they, they, I think these were sound. But I, I, I sort of saw one idea, and I kind of just assumed he wasn't going to go for it because I was like, hey, he's a bingo player. He doesn't want to trade queens. He wants to attack. And so I kind of didn't really expect that... Um, after uh so he took and then he played this move which i kind of saw but i just i don't know i just didn't think he was going to do it <laughs> to me this this is a hard move to face right you see queen e7 check you don't really want to block with the queen uh it just feels off like you're going to lose the d5 pawn and you don't want to block with the bishop because you obviously lose d5 um king, yeah king f1 though is interesting <laughs> yeah my when like thinking back earlier like king f1 was kind of my idea but when it, it actually happened on the board i chickened out yeah you know like i totally chickened out and uh so i brought the, the bishop back which i felt bad this was a real feels bad i didn't like this at all because like i'm undeveloping like this this just sucked and then then he hit me with this move which i was like oh that's a that's a strong move by the opponent because if black does take d5 there could be problems down the e-file yeah like you quickly castle play rookie one and all of a sudden like Black's king is stuck in the middle. Yeah, there are a lot of wild lines there. I had like a feeling that like when I get, I knew I was giving away a pawn. And I thought I was going to get enough play for it, and I kind of do, but like the computer doesn't really think so. So uh, here, this is I didn't know what to do. I can't castle because I'm going to get checkmated. This knight can't move. This knight, what what am I doing? I got to get this bishop out. Like I thought about just playing here and try to come out with the bishop this way, and I somehow didn't like that because like. Okay, fine. Say I get to play here and I play here. That does nothing to deal with this. Right. right. And so I played, I just played knight b3 with the idea that maybe I'll bring the bishop out if I have to. And, or maybe I'll play queen c2 and then that allows me to get out of, I don't know, something, something. I don't know. I had to make a move here and I didn't, I didn't feel good. This is where I started feeling pretty dejected, actually. I was like, man, I've really blown this. I'm going to lose my first round game and really was feeling pretty bad. Well, go, go forward a few moves because what I like is what you do coming up. Um, I feel like you put all of your pieces on good squares. Yeah. Like maybe you lose the D pawn, but in the next couple of moves, like you really activate everything and get all of your pieces set up nicely. 
yeah so he takes here and then uh you know i get to bring the rook in and like i, I somewhere around here i was i got up from the board and i was walking around and i was like I was feeling like I'm gonna lose this game, and then, yeah. then like it occurred. This is the this is the moment of the game I'm most proud of, which really has nothing to do with what happened on the board. Was like I I, I was like you know what you came here to play training games, like you've already got something you've never seen before, like you you came here and you got some material to study, which is what you wanted to do. And I was when I realized that I was like okay that feels pretty good, like and I, I'm here to play interesting games, and so I was I just kind of shifted my mindset of like, well, I'm just gonna try to present some problems. I'm clearly worse. I'm down upon. I didn't get any of the things I thought I was gonna get. Like I'm, and that that coming back to the board with that mentality, I think really really helped me at least enjoy the game and not feel as terrible as I did. That's that's good insight, I think, for the viewers too. <laughs> like just what you felt OTV, yeah. like the emotions, walking around, resetting. Um, and this at this point, this is where I kind of walked by and saw your game with the knight on d5 still. Yeah. And it's funny because I had total confidence in your opening prep. And I was like, JD might still be in book here. <laughs> it's like, There's a decent chance that JD knows this line somehow. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know this line. But, like, you, but you have a good compensation for the pawn. Like, even though it feels black is a little bit better. Yeah. Black is still under pressure. And one thing I like to do. Sorry to grab the mouse. Um kind of think about it from black side too yeah like when you're playing a game you can o otb you can walk around the board yeah look at it from your opponent's side or just try to visualize it with the board flipped it's still a little uncomfortable for black like how do you get the king out the the rooks aren't still in the corners now there's a few things that black has to figure out yet yeah mostly he needs to figure out how to play d5 mm -hmm. like if, if 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 he can play d5 then i think this is just terrible for for me uh, so the, the knight's got to move, and he chose to go this way. I expected this. Uh, for some reason, I didn't think this was as good. I don't know. Maybe he didn't like that I might do this or something. Um, so then I so I was like, okay, the only way I can stop d5 is by putting pressure on c5. Mm -hmm. That's the only... I can't... I, got, I, was, I spent a lot of time like, how do I even maneuver a knight to cover d5? And... I, I calculated that it takes roughly one and a half million night moves to get to d5 is what it seems like like either one of them neither one of them can get there so my the only thing i thought i could do was put pressure on here and i i, I thought that maybe he would just advance the pawn but i suppose i can just keep attacking it but my my game plan which never really came to fruition was like all right if i can just trade these two pawns then I can probably set up some sort of a blockade against the remaining pawn. This is what I was thinking in my head. Was like, mm -hmm. I, I, the, so I was like, maybe I'll have to move this knight. I'll play b4 and try to trade these two pawns and try to leave this pawn isolated by itself. That never really ended up happening. I played d6, which kind of made me happy because like this bishop is hard to get out. The king can't come defend because of the pen, and I would just grab this pawn. And like neither one of his knights are very adept at defending d6 i actually thought that 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 he would have to play this knight backwards which he would never want to do but i played here and I, what i told myself all right you're down a pawn but like it takes him five moves to catch up in development yeah like every i have everything out every, even my king i have everything so this is kind of what i was talking about earlier look at look at jd's position that he set up knight bishop knight two rooks you have five pieces on the board all of your pieces are active and you know moves like bishop e3 that you played putting the pressure on that c5 pawn that encourages black to play d6 that encourages him to play passive and now you're just putting all of the pieces on good squares no no matter what the engine eval is here i feel the chances of black making a mistake are higher because you have everything so active like the tactics are going to favor you if there's any on the board yeah i and there were lots of sort of tactical ideas and like we did have some flourishes so a5, I thought this move was kind of annoying because I was like, oh, I like my knight here because he wants to kick my knight so it's not attacking c5. But actually, I had, a, I had the knights are ugly on b3. Like, this knight is actually not on a great square. Yeah. And, and so I just played knight d2. And my idea was I'm just going to come to e4. And, like, then I'm actually, that knight's way better on e4 than it is here. So I feel like this was a, a waste of move. And I, I think Matt's right that this is, like, even though if black can consolidate, they're going to be much much better but it's it's already showing that like if you got to play a move like a5 when you're already way behind in development yeah and here i, I thought the best move and the computer confirmed that the best move is actually to play another pawn move 
and and stop me from going to e4 but didn't do that it just brought this out and i played knight d4 and now i didn't see any way to like i think i'm by force winning back one of these pawns now i don't yeah think there's anything anything to do so it only took like what three or four moves for you to get the pawn back you yeah just put your you put four pieces on good squares <laughs> and before you know it the pawn's dropping and yeah the tables turned yeah yeah and then and then really surprising move i i was like stunned i was like <laughs> what why would you i mean i guess i get that you need to develop but like that was that was i did not expect this and actually i met i was so focused on winning back the the uh the b and c pawns that i missed that i can actually just win an exchange here by force do you see it matt no <laughs> I, I i can just play i can just play here and there's no way that he can oh interesting yeah there's nothing that he can really do about that okay i guess he can move a rook like he can stupidly move a rook, but then I I just went a pawn, and then I'm gonna win yeah, this pawn. It's an improved version. Yeah, so I I just cool. I just missed this. I just took the pawn immediately. Takes takes, and then here, and uh, <clears throat> I I spent quite a bit of time here too because I was like, all right, the tables have vastly turned. Like I'm just better now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I'm like maybe I'm not so far ahead in development anymore, but like I thought that this this pawn imbalance. And the fact that I still have lots of pressure on on this square here, I, I must be better. But now you're kind of in conversion mode. Like you want to be accurate. Yeah. And don't let him somehow just make trades and equalize. So it was nice to find that I was considering two candidate moves here, and they're the top. They're the top two engine choices. My my the move I ended up rejecting just because I was like I don't know it's a little shaky. I don't need to be weird. Was I, I wanted to play knight d4, and my idea was to plant the knight on this square, and I was like that seems like a great square. Look kind of fancy though. <laughs> yeah, it looked, it looked a little too fancy and unnecessary, and because I, I mean, like he can't play here because then I can just recheck and I get to hold it, so like that's not an issue. But I don't know, like my my rook feels a little trapped, and I was like, I I don't need to get fancy. I I just I just went from like losing to somewhat better. Let's not like <laughs> let's not like push too hard. Don't let it slip. So the move I ended up playing is uh, technically slightly slightly better. I just move the king out of the way, like so that this okay. bishop is now active again and I'm, I'm making a real threat and he decides to offer the pawn and uh i again uh i had two two moves i was thinking about the one i played uh which is to take the pawn but the i actually did consider the strongest move which is here and i'm still threatening to win the pawn because like he can't like if he he can't take back because i'm gonna win gonna gonna win a rook and it's actually no good way there's no good way for him to defend the pawn, and this is probably a cleaner way to, to win the pawn than I than I did. And I looked at this, but I didn't actually see, like, I thought he could just play, I don't know, some random move, and I wouldn't, like, I don't know, maybe even this, and then I gotta give up, I give up the the rook, and I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, we, one thing I like about this position, too, is even if trades happen, there's no entry points or weaknesses on your second rank. Yeah, all of your pawns on the second are safe. He can't get a rook down there. Um, even rook d1 check if he ever got that, you can move your king up to e2. Yeah. So it's, yeah, there's no real counterplay for him. So, but I, I mean, I calculated clean way to win the pawn, and it's funny because like the next several moves got played like instantly because I, I spent. I mean, this to me, I thought this was like a critical moment deciding. Like, do I want to grab the pawn now, or do I want to try to play rook d1? Those are the two moves I was, the only two moves I was thinking about. I guess I was vaguely thinking about playing this, and I was like, no, stop. That's the wrong side of the board. That's not where action is happening. Like, don't, don't, don't go over there. Plus, I can't even win the pawn. Mm -hmm. Like, I could take this one, and then the rook check, and then he gets the pawn back. Like, I don't actually do anything. So I took, I saw this, my plan was to come back here. He did this, and then I took... And then he took here, and I saw this, and I was actually really, I was really proud of my move here, because I, I just played this, and like, he like, did a head jerk <laughs> when I when I played that, because we, we played those like this like, series of exchange happened like it's like boom 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 real quick, and then I played this, and he did yeah, this motion. You didn't see it. It's actually not even the best move. I I should have probably spent some time here, because the the best move is to bring the rook over, and I'm. All those pawns are, yeah, multiple pawns are probably going to drop. Yeah, multiple pawns are going to drop because, like, I mean, something like here, and if he plays rook f5, I can just grab this pawn, and now you can't, it's hard to defend in my two rooks, and your knights are a little bit tied in together, and you have three weak pawns, I have no weak pawns, like, 
I one thing I like about what you did though, Rook D8 was in this position. Black does have two knights for a rook. Yeah. And if those knights get moving towards your king, yeah, you might be like, okay, I regret that decision. Whereas after Rook D8, yeah, I was, I would, yeah, the trades are gonna happen. I was scared of the two knights. Mm -hmm. Like, like if for example, I had just taken here and got to this position. Oh yeah. So I, I think you had a good practical decision. Yeah, Rook I was, I, I was scared of this because I. I was like, those knights are going to be pretty well coordinated. I thought they would be able to coordinate well. And, like, these feel weak. And I was like, I don't know, because, like, I thought maybe the knights could post up. I didn't I didn't like this. I didn't want to do this. And yeah. I, I think the computer kind of agrees that I don't want to do this. Uh, so I went with this move. And he played here, which I think is terrible. This is just, like, horrible, because this lets me go into a pawn up king and Um So this is something <clears throat> where... You know, when you get this position in a game, you really want to be precise. So even just four moves ago, JD was already calculating out the king and pawn end game, right? You want to see what happens if the king goes here and we go take, 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 take. Is this king and pawn end game winning? And JD did the calculation, what, like four moves ago I, before the trades? I evaluated that pawn ending back here. Yeah, and so... For viewers, like this is important to figure out how to convert a winning position, right? You want to make sure that when things boil down to that endgame, that you're still winning. Um, you don't want to just stumble into it and say, oh, hey, this king and pawn endgame is win. Yeah, what I actually expected to happen was he would... I just expected rook f5. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, I thought we would get this kind of a thing. And... That probably was his best route, try yeah. to draw this. Yeah, I think, and I would certainly put the rook over here and... But at least, like, maybe he can hold the draw. Yeah. I... For his king and pawn, it looked like you were just winning. I thought, I thought this was a good practical chance for, for him to hold a draw. It's not... He doesn't really have any weaknesses. His king's a little bit active. His rook's pretty active. Like, he's just down a pawn. Like, it... it... This, he has similar compensation to what I had when I was down upon earlier in the game. Right. <laughs> well, he doesn't have more active pieces. Though. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have more active, but, but he does have active pieces. He's got a better king. Yeah. <laughs> so that's this is what I expected, and it didn't didn't happen. So when he played, oops, he played king c7, and I, of course I was I went into this, and I, I mean I, I hesitated for a second. I mean one, I'm committed. Like I, I didn't have like at this point I was forced into this. Yeah. But, I mean, he went into it pretty quickly, and I was like, maybe he sees something I don't. But, like, so I just bring the king up. He brought his king, and I thought this was nice. Uh, this is a good way to probably lose the game, actually. Uh, this is, like, the natural move, but I, I guess it doesn't actually lose the game, but I thought it did. It's close. Yeah. <laughs> Your king can barely get back, I think. Yeah, so I didn't want any of that. And so I just played f4, and honestly, I was a little, I, I was telling Matt, I was a little lazy in this end game. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really calculate a lot of this very deeply. I played like things that felt natural. Yeah. And I don't know when I checked with the engine, I actually played it all best. Like. Uh... Well, you used your intuition too. So like you knew, you knew certain structures were a win. Like if you, you have this two versus one on the queen side. If you trade one pawn for one pawn, you know that's winning all day. Yeah. Because that king has to go all the way over there to get the pawn, and your king is going to go right after his pawns. So you can kind of like shortcut your calculations, knowing that his king has to babysit the queen side pawn. Yeah, for sure has to. Yeah, has to babysit the queen side pawn. So I played this thinking I'm shutting his king down. I'm stopping his g5 ideas so that he yep. can't get a pass pawn. Yep. And I also just want his king is either gonna let my king come forward if he moves out of the way, I'm gonna, or he's gonna have to slowly move his pawns forward, which. I want him to do these pawns take a long time like i need a lot of moves to come win those pawns if they're back here but if they come forward he's just like bringing them into me which is what he kind of had to do because otherwise my king does get through so he played here and I, i'm just slowly i started making a pass pawn yep and then this surprised me i didn't expect this at all because now i have a pass pawn and it's protected and uh, I calculated that if the king ever even gets to b3, if he ever even gets here, I don't care. Because I go 1, 2, 3, 4, and he needs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm queening first. And that excludes the fact that I'm queening with check. Yeah, so he needs 6. Because yeah, the king has to move another yeah, So time. he really needs 6. So yeah. like, so this is like a totally stable structure that I never have to worry about now. Like, it's yep. off limits for him. 
And your king has moves to spare. Yeah, yeah. He has to retreat once his king moves. Yeah, so he played... I played f3, and I was thinking, like, maybe I'd have to come over this way, and I didn't want his king to come into e4. That's all I was really thinking about was there. And, again, he's running out of pawn moves. So he plays here, and I went this way. And I, I kind of was, like, baiting him in, because it seems like I'm letting... I'm giving up ground, but I had... I had figured out, again, that, like, he can never actually come to b3. Uh, so he went this way anyway. I don't think this was good, but I don't know what else he's supposed to do. I kind of expected that it would go something like this is what I was expecting to happen. I was going to win this pawn. Again, thankful that he can never come here. Mm -hmm. And he can actually, because we draw the square, like, he can never even come to the g-file. Like, he's right. stuck. he's stuck in this. His king can never leave this box. So if I can... If I come win this pawn and then put my king on g4 and just press and trade that pawn, he can't possibly stop this guy and this guy. So this is the the win that I thought was going to happen. Uh, instead, he chose to go this way. I came up. He played f5. I come across. I'm going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to go win this pawn and then this pawn, and then, then I'll make this queen. Yeah. And here he threw in the tower. So, so he calculated, you know, what if this king goes after this pawn, goes after this pawn? Knew both of them were complete loss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, I'm way, way, way faster. That's something I've really kind of been working on. Is like, because it's hard when you appear like, like you know, and, and not that long ago, I would like look at this king b three move and be like, that's scary. Like, yeah. Like because like I'm giving him counterplay, and, and I like... am giving him counterplay, and it would just kind of freak me out. And I would just like. I could somehow in my head I couldn't even calculate it. Mm -hmm. Like I would just fumble and like didn't didn't know what to do. So anyway, I, I was quite happy to 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 win this game. I well, hope to go back to the drawing board and learn some more about the opening. I haven't had a lot of chance to research that yet, but uh, but this e6 idea that they played in the in the opening, uh, we'll go back and yeah. What are the give us a couple takeaways? Uh, so e6. Yeah, e6 handling this position. Uh, again, the I just i can play a similar way to the way i did in the game with knight e2 and avoids all of this business with this queen stuff and i get all the same sort of play so i, I think I, I think i made the right idea that i didn't have to defend the pawn mm -hmm. i just needed to understand that just because i didn't think he wanted to play the queen trade that doesn't mean he won't so right. i think that's the big takeaway and then uh, again, I, I'm pretty happy with just the general pressure that I was putting on the position when we got to here. Like, I felt I felt pretty good about the way the game went once we got to this point. And I think that's an important positive takeaway. You know, sometimes, like, for my own games, I always look at the critical things I could do. Like, oh, maybe I should have done this instead or something else. But this is a huge positive for JD. Like, the only negative takeaway, I think, or constructive one was that opening line that we just showed, 92. Huge positive right here. Get all the pieces active. And another huge positive, I think, was the calculation to finish the game. Like this stretch here, figuring this out, and just the pure calculation. So you put your pieces on good squares, your opponent made the mistakes, and then you calculated, here's the smooth way to victory. Yeah. So, I mean, we didn't mention your opponent's rating either, by the way. Oh, it was 2035. So I actually had a higher rated opponent than he did. Yeah, 2031. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a really nice game, JD. <clears throat> Anything else you want to look at from this? No, let, let's show us your epic monster game that went on for how long was your game? Almost five hours. Five hour game, yeah. <laughs> no spoilers though. <laughs> so we're gonna come into these game reviews with a smile, win, loss, or draw, because we learn something every game, right? Yeah, yeah. You never lose when you learn, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my game was started with knight c three. So I'm kind of going with the uh, d four classical course that we have for chess goals. And then we get into a King's Indian defense, and I play the H3 line. And this is one of your favorites. I mean, we've seen a, a ton of good games by you in this this yeah. line. So my opponent plays E5, push past. And the idea in these lines is Black usually wants to play F5 in the King's Indian defense. But because I have pawns on E4 and G4, oftentimes F5 is a mistake according to the engine. Like it kind of blows the game open and gives Black a lot of play. But the downside for black is it opens up their king side. And I actually want my king over on the queen side. So that's kind of the plan here. I'm I'm waiting for f5, but I'm also going to attack king side once I shut down the center and the queen side. 
this is the first move that surprised me, JD, Queen H4. I mean, I, I've i seen some Queen H4 ideas, but yeah. honestly, like, before creating the D4 course, this knight, for me, almost always started on knight F3. Yeah. Like, I would start knight F3. So I don't have really any experience facing this line. Yeah. And the annoying thing is it shuts down this pawn storm. Like, the queen is blocking me, and I couldn't get the queen out of there. But it, that's also not where his queen wants to be either i feel like because one of the things that like in a lot of these king's indian games that i've won um I, the, my favorite way to win these actually is when i get this like this g4 h3 that I, I get these these things and we end up sort of like shutting down the king side yeah and we still have all of the queen side advantages that you have in a regular king's yeah. indian so i've had a lot of these games where i've like still win on the queen side that's a really good point yeah so his queen could be stuck over here on the king side and i can end up winning on the queen side which is kind of what i would sort of feel like so look at this queen d2 i'm threatening to win his queen um and at this point like i should talk a little bit about the psychology i was feeling very good here because i see that i'm about to win his queen my opponent has to play h6 and now both queen and bishop are tied down to h6 because i have queen and bishop attacking this pawn i'm already looking at ideas like could I play g5 right here, for example? And if black takes, I take with bishop, and this queen has to retreat like back here next to the king. Yeah. And if black pushes past, this queen is very close to trapped. But the hard thing was trying to figure out, well, how do I get at her? I could go knight here, knight here, <laughs> knight here, and try to win her. But the, the issue that I found was a lot of times black might have f5 or f6, and it's bringing this rook into the game. Hmm. But every single move, essentially, I was trying to calculate queen traps. Um, but I think a takeaway for me is probably to be a little more efficient with my calculation because I burned a lot of time. That's what I was to... say. Like when you're trying to, sometimes you get down these rabbit holes where you're like, I see an idea and you keep trying yeah. to make it work on every successive move. And then like next thing you know, you've spent 45 minutes on, on an idea that just never worked. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be one of my takeaways, um, spending a lot of time on these tactics. So my opponent plays knight c5, attacking this once, but it's defended twice, both my knights. So I play bishop e2, and this is kind of a thematic move in this position. A lot of times you bring the f, the d rook over to g1, and if you look at black's position, black should be trying to attack queen side, but it's a little bit clunky. These are superfluous knights, and... I'm actually doing a pretty good job controlling the light squares. If black ever plays c6, I'm pretty much going to take, and then the d-pawn drops. And then yeah. like JD said, I can try to win this on the queen side. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm playing a bit prophylactic here. Knight b4, sneaky little threat. Knight takes a2 check, and if I take back, knight b3 wins my queen. So I sidestep. Uh, b6 by black. I think that's terrible. So yeah, all of his pawns are on dark, and I almost think that he's just playing for f5 at this point. So, I mean, but like, so I, I, I've seen people play b6 is because they're afraid that you're going to take on c5, and they don't, I guess they don't want to take with a d-pawn. Right. But like, b6 is, I, I'm pretty confident it's a, a waste of tempo. I, I think he was afraid of maybe me playing like f4 at the right moment, you know, doing something where I take and get the pawns to push, but... I agree with you. I I just don't think the pawn really belongs here. Um, it's almost like a pass in a way. Yeah. I don't think he saw how my attack could continue, and I think he was all in on this plan was kind of the idea. Yeah. Okay, so I play here. He sidesteps the king, and at this point, I'm looking at every. I'm looking at this. Can I get away with this? Takes takes, and. I mean, I have, stock, kind of. I have Stockfish on now, and Stockfish is saying, you kind of can. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Queen F6 would be played. Um, the computer's saying some crazy line like this, and it it's giving a 0, 0.00. Oh, but you probably get a perpetual check on the Queen. Oh, okay. Is probably what the why it's zeros there. And I was also looking at this line. Can I get away with this? Take, take, and do something like Rook G4 rook g1 and the computer's saying no, no. because of this and, <laughs> and in, in my defense i did calculate that this would happen yeah um so that's kind of how i came to the and i was also looking at this by the way g5 yeah. but it didn't quite seem to work i thought he could play h5 
Um, so that's why I played f3, because the f pawn guards e4. Yeah. Now maybe I am looking at knight f5 ideas, if it's my move here. I see. So he goes bishop d7. Let's just see what the computer says. Oh, it thinks it's playable. It's not like crushing, but it's certainly playable. Yeah, and then... So rips. he's got to play king h7? No one's going to play king h7 there. And that's to guard this pawn, so his queen can retreat. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this would have been an interesting line going for this, um, but I did not play it. Okay, so I did knight to b5. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to play on both sides of the board. I felt like I was shutting down his queen side play here a bit. I'm yeah. tying something down to c7. If he ever takes, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Because this knight actually gets trapped. I can kick it with a3. So he has to have an escape route for that knight before he would consider taking this. Yeah, and trap knight on the queen side maybe comes up. So he does rook here, kick this knight back, and now I'm feeling pretty good. I, I bring this bishop back, and, and I want to come to c2 and get on this diagonal. So my worst bishop is getting back into the game, Yeah. and then eventually I'm going to push these pawns on the king side. That was kind of the plan. And then my opponent plays f5. And what I like about our repertoire against the king's indian f5 is almost always a bad move according to stockfish and that was the case here so my opponent was getting a little antsy right he sees that i'm improving 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 the position he lashes out with f5 this gives me a huge advantage it's like a blunder of a piece by the eval yeah we got to prove it right did you prove it matt so i played g takes f <laughs> this is good he takes and i take um, at this point, I thought he could try an exchange sack. Yeah. Take, take, bishop takes. But the thing is, I always can block with my bishop. And all of a sudden, I'm getting rid of the worst bishop. And then this guy's come into life. My rooks are coming to life. And he still is stuck with superfluous knights over here yeah. that aren't doing a ton. No. They're, they're, they're the total, like, total wrong side of the board Yeah, from where he's trying to play. So he took with bish. I take back. Rook takes. And at this point... I had probably like 30 minutes on the clock, and we had a 30-second increment. Yeah. And we're at move 22, and at move 40, we get a bonus half hour. The psychology of this position, I got overconfident. Yeah. I started playing a little bit quick, um, and then I started burning my time once I got into trouble. Yeah. So that's something where if I were to play this again, I would spend the time right here. Yeah. Like finish him off right here. Because the crazy thing is the Stockfish eval is plus 10 here it's plus 9.9 .9. yeah <laughs> i just have to figure out how to do it um so i double rooks on g threatening to take here that's good he retreats back and i think here i should have played bishop c oh i did play bishop c2 yeah actually um on this move i was thinking bishop c2 might have been a little more difficult for him to figure out hitting this rook right away yeah because e4 like he played in the game doesn't work as well after this and this, and then e5 straight away. Because mm, you're threatening the, yeah, the fork. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is much cleaner than what I did. And I considered bishop c2. Um, but what I thought during the game, I felt like this was just completely winning. No matter what I did. Yeah. But then he goes e4, and things get a little bit tricky here. Because this bishop has come into life. Yeah. He wants to move it to f6 at some point if it needs to be safer. Yeah. And this knight has this idea of relocating here in some lines. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, what do I do? And I freaked out here. I played rook takes g7. That's a terrible move. Why not? Why not? So the most natural move for me is bishop d4. That's like the first move that came that comes to mind here. Yeah, and bishop d4 is a great move. Um, so, I mean, if he plays bishop... I mean, if What he, was I afraid of here? I mean, I, I, he can't play bishop takes bishop, right? I guess he can. Oh, okay. This is why I didn't like it. Knight takes d4 would be a good move. I kept looking at this with the queen block. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of too, but I guess this is fine. Yeah, because we still have a lot of play in the position, and this bishop is opened up. That's yeah. a key key point. So I could here play queen d2 or queen e3 going after this h pawn, and this is really uncomfortable for black. But I think... Um, you got you got inspired by tricks here. Yeah, I think what I did this first move was okay. F takes e. I not a fan because it shuts your bishop down and gives him a blockade square on e five. I feel but like look at this queen g two. Yeah, 
he has to play rook g8, and now rook g6. Oh, and he can't take. Yeah, he can't take because of mate on, on he, yeah, he gets mated if you want to show that. Yeah, there you go, yeah. So, I mean, it was tricky, but I just really made a big mistake here. Rook takes g7, and after rook takes bishop here. So I knew I would win the exchange back. Yeah. And I thought this was like the cleanest way to play the position. Yeah. The move I missed, I I looked at queen f4, um, but I didn't want to give black any counterplay. What did I think he was going to play here? So the idea is I want to take this rook, rook takes back, queen f8, and it's going to be mate. Oh. That's the idea. That's somewhat hard to deal with. He doesn't. I thought he was going to do this. Yeah, but you you get a you get a check, right? So this is what I missed. I missed that I can check here and that this is still completely winning. Because look at this position. He moves the king back. Rook g6. He's completely stuck. Yeah. And his only knight is this knight, which is tied down by this one, and I have full control of this position. This is what I missed. I didn't realize I could just play bishop takes pawn here i thought i was actually kind of losing steam on the attack yeah because once this rook isn't pinned now i'm scared like yeah. oh do i have to get my exchange back right away yeah yeah um and at this point my clock was running low like i was i went from overconfident to burning too much time and just yeah not calculating well okay so let's go forward so i took he goes knight here and the idea is he wants to just plant his knight there and he's probably better if he can do that yeah and he's up the exchange at this point I did calculate the strongest move, bishop d1, and I thought he would play, oops, sorry, queen h4. If he goes queen h3, I have this cool trick, bishop g4. So I looked at this during the game, huh. and my bishop guards my rook. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. But he could play queen h4, and I had calculated this, this, and this with the idea of rook h2 and win this pawn. But look at, he has the saving move knight here. Yeah, and now it's just the equal game? Yeah. Rook g2. <clears throat> Oh, <laughs> rook g2 is nice. So again, I was like, just uncomfortable, second guessing all my calculation. I did not play bishop d1. I took. He takes. I take. King takes. And at this point, I had like five minutes on the clock. We're at move 30, and my opponent had 25. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, great. And this this is a terrible bishop on c2. Yeah. And, and I'm in danger of maybe being worse here right if i'm just, just stuck with this bad bishop and the queens come off i could be worse you got some i mean he has a pretty bad minor piece too though yeah the a6 knight yeah okay so i check here moves the king check again moves the king knight d4 knight here um what he's trying to do is play king d8 king c8 king b7 and then his king guards his weakest pawn and that frees this knight up to move and i kind of knew that was his plan and I just made a big error here. I played knight e6, and I missed his reply, queen f3. Mm. And now I got really uncomfortable, because that queen's... The one thing I didn't want was the queen trade. Yeah. Because yeah. I felt like with that bad bishop on c2 that I could be worse here. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 essentially... You're you're giving up a pawn or trading queens. It's You can't really avoid it. But then I'm calculating this, and I'm like, well, I might be losing with, this, with the queens on. Right? If yeah. all of a sudden his knights come in. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, queen. His, his knights do have some nice squares, though. So I take. He takes. And I I blitz out this move. Yeah. And he must have spent, like, ten minutes on this reply. Because he could play knight here. Yeah, and probably should. And, and if those knights trade off, Which, even though he's down a pawn, he's, his king gets into the dark squares, and this bishop cannot attack any of his pawns. Yeah. And my plan was to take... And I think he has to take with D, because if he takes with B, I could actually, like, run my king over here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But all I was doing was playing for a draw here. Yeah. I just need to try to hold on and not lose any pawns. Plus 10 to zeros. <laughs> yeah, plus 10 eval to zeros. Uh, so he did not play knight c5. He went king f6. Now, at this point, I felt like I was almost losing. Yeah. I was thinking draw or loss. And kind of like you were saying in your game, I was already, like, mentally preparing, like, how do I handle a loss round one to someone that's rated 200 points lower than me? Like, I have to just say, okay, I learned some things. Opening went well. Uh, Got to work on time management and calculation. Yeah. Then I, I tried to reset myself and say, okay, Matt, 
play actively. You need to get this bishop active, and you need to avoid a knight for knight trade. I yeah. don't want a knight for knight trade. Those were my two goals. So I play here, and the idea is I'm actually letting him win this pawn, but I want to get my king up to d3 and then over to e3. Your bishop is so much better with your e4 pawn off the board. Right, yeah. The, yeah, good point. This bishop is blocked by the pawns. So he goes for this. He played that like instantly and grabbed the pawn. Now I played knight to d4. I had an idea at this point. I saw if I can get my knight to c6 and pawn to b4, this knight is trapped. I have to say, I walked by your board in this position and like, I, I saw this idea of trapping the knight like immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and apparently your opponent maybe didn't see the idea, but like, he didn't see it at all. I was pretty happy. I just walked by and I was like, oh, I think he's going to win the knight. And then I w kept walking on and like, I mean, th so this, you know, we play this uh, h3 kid all the time. Yeah. This a3 b4 is pretty thematic yeah. as a way to like shut down the knight. Mm -hmm. So it's not that much of a stretch to, to figure out like, oh, that could win the knight. Yeah, but he doesn't have to allow that. I mean, he can. He, he, oh, yeah, he could move his knight here. Just knight c5. Yeah. At the at the very least. Um, <clears throat> but at this point, I I still felt I was worse. Yeah. So, you probably are. His king is great. So he plays here. But now I'm seeing, oh, that's with check. Yeah. I played king d3. And this sort of baits him into taking the pawn. Like, I almost feel dirty playing king d3 because <laughs> I was hoping he would go for that, and he played that very quickly. So both of the pawn captures, or forks, he played very quickly. But now look what's happening. Bishop g4 hits his knight and then can go to c8 in one move. So bishop g4, it's with a tempo. The knight moves. Knight c6 check with a tempo. King moves. Another cool thing here is I'm guarding all of these squares. Yeah. So his king can't come down the board towards me. And this knight on a6 is now getting trapped. B4. So my plan is bishop c8, take the knight. Yeah, and but what's interesting is that like the computer's still saying this is like a dead equal position. Yeah. Which I don't quite understand. I think it's not going deep enough. Ah. We have it cut at depth 20. Ah. A takes B, A takes B, oh, sorry, H5. So he's trying to get me to take this pawn because then I'm not in time to win the knight. Yeah. So I go back. I thought he was going to play knight C5. When I, when I was, when I walked by him a little 10 second thing, I, I thought knight C5 is what would be played here. Yeah. With, and then B takes. And I thought that was a like a more solid structure for him and your pawns are immobile and like maybe he can do yeah. something I, I don't know why i don't know why he didn't try that one so here his pawns running pretty quickly and i think the the biggest takeaway in this end game is control your opponent's king it's yeah. all about the kinks so one thing i want to avoid is running my king all the way over here to win this pawn and having his king super active mm -hmm. coming after my pawns so i go knight d3 yeah, if you lost like if you lost your C and D pawns, you you, you could probably still lose this even up a piece. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I know he's resourceful. I mean, he already outplayed me in the middle game. Yeah. Okay, so knight f7. One thing I calculated here: if the knight ever comes to e5, I should be able to win with that trade if my king is boxing his king out. Uh -huh. So that's why I play king f4. Yeah. Okay. So king f4, knight here. I think he was trying to bait me with this move, JD. Hmm. Bishop e6 is so tempting. Yeah, okay. Because you just shut down that knight. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember this thinking that knight, that, that, but what's the idea? The idea is he's going to go c6. Oh, yeah, 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 I did see that, yeah, yeah. And he gets one pawn off the board, and that's one pawn closer to saving the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is still a win, but when I saw c6, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want that. Okay, so I go knight e1. Knight goes back, go after his pawn, knight here, and I see he wants knight b6 check. But the cool thing is, I'm just, I'm not, um, I'm not playing too quickly, right? So I'm not trying to win this pawn with the chance of maybe his king getting in, yeah, or running my king over with his king getting in. I'm just trying to hold his king down, and I know after knight to b6 check, where is the knight going from there? 
because like we talked about, anytime the knight goes to e5, I just take it off, and I'm going to win with the bishop and pawns. Yeah. He can't make any breaks. So I play, so he checks, I play king here, and he goes for this, and I'm happy with this. Like, I know this should be a win now. Yeah, this should be pretty easy, I think. I feel like, anyway. Yeah, because we already hit move 40, so I got that bonus 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so I take... Um, King g4 was kind of interesting here, but I'll show you why. So at this point, if he tries to run with the king, I actually have king f4. And this is cool, because if the king ever comes to d3, I can go c5 check. And then you're going to play d6 next. Yeah, or take and then d6. Oh, either. Yeah, okay. And this, yeah, this is a win. So if he doesn't go king d3, how does his king keep the pawn guarded? He has to play here. Well, now I go king here. And he's still got to go to d3. Yeah, still goes to d3, and then the check wins. So there is, so in this position, I think I should have actually gone king g4. Yeah. Had I calculated a little bit better, he would have one less square. Um, so I go king g3 here, here, and he goes this way. And I'm like, oh, he knows. Like, he, he must have saw that same idea. Hey, I thought you just played king f2. Like, and, and king f2 is winning. I expected, like, that you would do something like this and get this position, and he would come here, and I don't know, maybe it's not so easy to... Well, no, you can just play like this, and you're going to win the pawn. Yeah. Similar yeah, to I, the game, I guess. Yeah, I think this is winning. Um... Yeah, by, by this point, my game ended an hour and a half or almost two before Mads did so i was just sitting behind his he was watching shoulder. yeah i was standing with like my arms crossed like this right behind his opponent trying to intimidate him not yeah really, intimidation really. no you were i think he was <laughs> he felt the heat <laughs> bishop a6 <clears throat> um so here what i was thinking with the bishop a6 is i was gonna force if he goes king here i was gonna go king here yeah <clears throat> and i was gonna force his king to go to this position then i could do this so, oh, and you get that idea that we were just looking at. Yep. So I felt this was pretty clean, and he goes this way, and then I had bishop c8. This cuts his king off, and he resigned here. Yeah. Um, so that was a marathon game, 59 moves. I Just to quickly recap, I think the main takeaways, this opening went really well, um, but I think I need to work on time management and not getting overconfident. And then... You know, I think conversions this, in dynamic play. Cons yeah, conversions when there's counterplay for the opponent, dynamic play, um, and ca and practice <clears throat> calculation. This is something that I've had trouble with these kind of positions. Yeah. Quite a bit. You know, when my opponent finds these resources. Yeah. Um, but I think the end game, a positive takeaway was just looking for activity here. Yeah, giving away those two pawns, I think was was like, I think was probably hard to do and, yeah. and impressive to be able to, to do that intentionally and and see that you that was the best way to get get play Ac yeah so activity and then the king placement too yeah. like keep that black king boxed out it was the same in both of our end games yeah yeah for sure like, yeah, yeah, yeah really focus on that king placement first <laughs> um, okay so that was a marathon game round one both one and oh yeah and presta j also won his game we got to hang out with him yesterday a bit and I'm sure you'll see him on video and coming up. All right, so stay tuned. Round two coming up next. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.